Oxidation has, especially in the last 10 years or so in healthcare, has become quite a conversation with regard to the negative effects of oxidation on our cells. Oxidation is very damaging. It could break our cell membranes, it could break down our mitochondrial membranes, it can break down our DNA. And so oxidation inside our cells is very, very dangerous and likely one of the causes of premature aging or even the majority of chronic illnesses that we are exposed to as we age. And so understanding oxidation, but specifically today, understanding how hyperbaric affects that oxidative pathway, that's what we're gonna talk about. So in one of the previous videos that we did on hyperbaric and mitochondrial function, we talked about this analogy between the mitochondria, which is the part of our cell that makes ATP and energy, and I was comparing that to an engine. And I was doing that because in a lot of ways, there's, there's similarities between those two mechanisms. With an engine, we're talking about combustion and we're talking about the idea that we're bringing in fuel and we're mixing it with oxygen. So we're oxidizing the fuel. And as a result of oxidizing the fuel, we are creating power, we're creating heat, and we have these waste products of water basically and carbon dioxide. Now, if we wanted to compare that to our cells, we would say that the mitochondria is ultimately the part of the cell that acts like an engine. And what is it doing? It's accepting, you know, we're breaking our fuel down from the point that we eat it until it gets into our bloodstream and ultimately our cells start absorbing it. And then we keep breaking those down into further smaller chemicals. And then we get this basically NAD, we get NAD to enter into the mitochondria. And for the most part, we're, we're going through a redox reaction. So reduction and oxidation, and we're gonna oxidize that fuel to create power, which in our cells is called ATP. We're gonna get heat, which is generated as a result of this process. And then we're gonna have waste products, water and carbon dioxide, just like that engine. But in our cells, if oxygen levels get too high or there's some incomplete metabolism, right? So the comparison, combustion is what happens in the engine, metabolism is what happens in our cells. But from incomplete metabolism, our bodies can start releasing what's called superoxide. And superoxide is basically a compound that is a free radical that could leave the mitochondria and then oxidize surrounding tissues or organelles or cell membranes or DNA membranes, nuclear membranes. And that oxidation can help break down, you know, parts of our cells, which like I was saying earlier, would be very damaging to our body. And so the natural question is, does hyperbaric increase ATP production? The answer is yes. Does hyperbaric oxygen increase the oxygen getting into the mitochondria? Absolutely. Does that increase oxygen potentially increase the free radical release of superoxide into our cells? And the answer to that is also yes. And so it becomes a question, is hyperbaric therefore dangerous? And what I would like to say is no. And when applied properly, not only is it not dangerous, but it could help our body deal with the oxidation at a much better level. This is how that works. It appears as though when we get over oxidized from our environment, whether that's through EMFs or smoking or drinking or you know standard American diet, all the things in our environment that have the capacity to oxidize our bodies from the outside in, that can deplete our own antioxidant system. And as our own antioxidant system gets depleted, we have a harder time dealing with that and we become over oxidized. And I think that's what we're seeing with premature aging and a lot of chronic illness is this either deficiency and or depletion of our antioxidant system. Now that's what happens when we're over oxidized from our environment. If we can contrast that to oxidation from hyperbaric, what we will see is that the oxidation that gets upregulated in our body from hyperbaric, that's coming from within. It's coming from within our cells. The difference between that is that as that superoxide is released into our system from our own normal cellular metabolism, cellular respiration, our body's intrinsic antioxidant system starts to get upregulated, meaning superoxide dismutase and glutathione, which are two pathways that help us get rid of free radicals from inside of our body, both of those get upregulated when our body sees more oxidation coming from the mitochondria. And so, you know, what we could say is, listen, if you had a patient that was very fragile or over oxidized, you wouldn't necessarily want to take them to 
maybe two and a half atmospheres at 100% oxygen, that could be too much oxidation for that patient. Likewise, you could expose them to lower PO2s, slightly lower pressures of oxygen, and expose them over a period of time, helping to upregulate their endogenous antioxidant systems, the superoxide dismutase and the glutathione pathways. And as we upregulate those pathways, that patient can now tolerate higher levels of hyperbaric. As you expose them to higher levels of hyperbaric, they should then also be able to create even more SOD and glutathione so that they could handle even more challenge from the hyperbaric. Now, not only will that improve their capacity to tolerate the hyperbaric treatment, but what it appears to be is that as we improve those systems, the superoxide dismutase and the glutathione pathways, not only are they handling the hyperbaric oxidation better, they're also gonna be able to handle exogenous, the oxidation that they're getting from their environment. And so as a result, they become not more tolerant to their treatment, but they also become more tolerant to their environment. And now they can start becoming stronger and more resilient and ultimately what we know is, you know, health is very directly correlated to your ability to adapt to your environment. So as your environment changes and your body registers those changes and then creates a pathway to respond to those changes, our ability to adapt to a changing environment is directly related to our quality of life and our ability to have a healthy life. And so this is all part of the hormetic concepts that we, you know, talked about in one of the earlier videos, but as we are challenging that system and building that up and creating more resilience to our environment and to oxidation, you know, it's going to, it's going to extend out into other areas of our health and our life as well. Now, just to go over oxidation does create problems, right? We've talked about it. it can break down lipids. Your membranes are lipids. So your cell membrane, your nuclear membrane, your mitochondrial membrane, those are all lipids. Some of your organelles are also lipid based. It could break down proteins. So, you know, muscles or, or uh, certain parts of RNA or DNA. And so all of this could become damaged if you were over oxidized. At the same time, if you're not ever exposed to oxidation, you're going to lose out on some of the stimulating effects of, of oxidation, which include things like increased energy production, upregulation of the antioxidant system, sirtuin uh, stimulation and sirtuins are super important chemicals for cell cycle function, cell replication, DNA repair, cellular repair, membrane repair. It's also going to have a negative effect on hormones and neurotransmitters. So we need some amount of oxidation in order to stimulate the growth and repair and regeneration of our cells. So if you're over oxidized, yes, you might become uh, more at risk for certain autoimmune diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, chronic inflammation, cardiovascular disease, cancer, for sure. And if you're getting the right amount of oxidation, there's benefits to that. And that includes the hormetic effect, right? Challenging the system to improve your health and overall quality of life. Growth factor signaling, adaptation to your environment, normal hormonal signaling. We need that oxidation in order to really upregulate our body's capacity to continue to function at a high level in an ever-changing environment that we all really live in. Lastly, I just wanna show you this graphic from a study on hyperbaric mechanisms. At the top, you can see hyperbaric oxygen, right? HbO2, so hyperbaric oxygen creates an elevated amount of extracellular oxygen, and that increases your reactive oxygen species and your reactive nitrogen species. What does that mean? It means it increases your free radicals. Free radical stimulation is ultimately responsible for all the other cascades below it, from in increasing growth factors for healing and regeneration of cells and tissues, to stem cell mobilization, to migrate into a healing area, to get new cells to be able to replicate and take over for either senescent cells or dying cells or damaged cells that can't come back. It upregulates immune function and increases your ability to fight infection. And then ultimately it lowers cytokines and reduces inflammation. So, you know, this is a summary of the cascade of events that actually occurs from hyperbaric oxygen, specifically through stimulating free radical production and increasing oxidation levels, increasing it enough to stimulate these factors, but again, not too much to create all the negative issues associated with overoxidation of our cells. So I hope that helps to clarify the relationship between hyperbaric oxygen and oxidation, because there absolutely is a relationship. And if we understand that relationship and apply hyperbaric properly, we can not only not overoxidize our patients, but we can actually help improve their antioxidant systems. And while they're being exposed to hyperbaric and getting increased oxidation safely, that's the trigger 
for so many of the other beneficial components that we actually want from all of those hyperbaric sessions. So I hope you enjoy the video and we'll see you next time. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are going to be.